welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. If you need an excuse to move to the sunny Caribbean and dish the gym, it turns out you may be able to blame an allergy to cold weather and exercise. It's true. There are some peculiar but real allergies. Joining me now is allergist Dr. Tim Maynardi to tell us all about these weird but true allergies. Thank you. It's good to see you, Dr. Manny. Moving to the Caribbean. That's I right. love to move to the Caribbean as old as I get. All right. This is uh, very interesting. We talk about cold weather. Mm -hmm. Am I really, are there people really allergic to cold weather? Absolutely, and it's actually relatively common. It's one of a group of uh, what we would call physical urticarias. All right, mm -hmm. urticaria is a fancy 50 cent word for hives. All right. right, hives. Exactly. All right, we have a little immunology, not a lot, just yeah, a little go bit. Ahead, go All right, ahead. so anytime you have hives, it's because you're releasing a chemical called histamine. All right, that's why we take antihistamines for allergies. So usually you need a protein to release that histamine. Tree pollen protein, cat protein, peanut protein. Physical urticaria is the, pro the, the histamine is released without a protein. So in this, it's cold weather. So exposed skin in the cold, in particular hands holding onto cold drinks, you'll develop hives where that cold has touched them. Right. right? Treatment is antihistamines. And, uh, and I guess the prevention is to kind of use protection in your hands, you know, things of the sort. Move to Florida. That's, that's, Move that's, to Florida. Right. That is, that is the best idea. There's no money in Florida. <laughs> uh, Exercise, again, this is going to be very popular. If you tell people that they're not exercising because they may be allergic to it, this is going to be a good one. It's not going to get you out of the contract, though. You still got to pay for the two years. Okay. Uh, no, exercise anaphylaxis is very interesting. It's actually a very scary disease. It's a disease that happens to people usually between the ages of 15 and 45. This is not a disease of five year olds, not a disease of 95 year olds. Right. It's something that can happen suddenly. And the condition can actually be quite serious. Um, what usually occurs is that in the middle of exercise, People develop a little warmth, they'll break out in hives, and then the actual the reaction becomes systemic, and they can have true anaphylaxis to it. Really? When it was originally described about 30 years ago, um, there was a strong association with certain foods, and there still is a strong association with foods. The original foods were shellfish. People were eating shrimp or lobster, and then were exercising, and then they would have this severe reaction. But now it's much more common actually with wheat. There's a, a strange epitope in wheat called omega gliadin, which sounds quite fun. Fancy. It's very fancy. Uh, that when you take that and you exercise within a few hours of eating it, you can develop this very severe reaction. Now, it doesn't just have to be exercise. So anybody who has this has to be very careful about any, any type of strenuous activity. Yard work. You know, raking the leaves, um, you know, planting the gardens, things like that can actually elicit this response. But if you're finding that you're in the gym and you're breaking out in hives because you're running on a, on a bike or something, I guess number one is to come see you, but mm -hmm. number two is also to think about the association of food allergies in association with, with the extraneous activities that you're doing. Absolutely. So an allergy can help you walk you through all of that. Right. It can actually give you a treatment plan so that you can actually continue to work out without having problems like that. There's some, some much better medications out there than some of the antihistamines. All right. Help a out. very popular allergy. I'm allergic to my underwear. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's right. Everyone going commando. So right. that, that's, allergies to underwear is actually a different. All right. So I mentioned the immune system and histamine. This one's a little bit different. These are T cells. We're not going to go too into it, but it's called a contact dermatitis. Contact okay. Dermatitis. So usually what you see, particularly with underwear, is latex. All right. Latex is in everything, right? So usually around the band. So in that situation, probably the best way to avoid it is to just either use a latex free underwear or to tuck a piece of clothing in between the band. Like in second grade, when I have my shirt tucked into my underwear, that's kind of a good way of avoiding it. But it's not just latex. There's like a lot of things in textiles that you can become allergic to. The dyes are pretty common. Also preservatives. I mean, there's a reason why a shirt looks really good when it's hanging on the rack at the department store. It's actually have preservatives that are impregnated in that. Well, the that chemicals. Textile. Absolutely. Right. And again, I guess this would be a popular question. Is there a, a, a textile uh, that is hypoallergenic, like cotton Absolutely. versus uh, whatever? Absolutely. So, so um, there are whole companies now that are doing these organic, undyed, non-fragrance-free natural fibers like cotton are, 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 are the best. But things like lycra also, if you, if you need something that has um, the stretchy capabilities of latex, lycra is usually hypoallergenic. So. All right. Yeah. Well, the last one that I want to ask you is, can I be allergic to water? Yeah. And you, 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 you can be allergic to water. You That's, know, people, it's, it's, this, this one I may never see. 
So I see the I see latex. I see all these all this, but but water allergy is about one in two hundred and fifty million. So you need you need you need a billion people to so find there's, four cases. So there's somebody out there who's walking there's, with a water allergy. Somebody out all there. Right, you got to explain this one to me. I can't. Nobody can explain it. This is this one is nobody has a clue what causes this, but it's truly water. If you put water on these people's skin, they develop very painful hives. It doesn't happen with alcohol. You put alcohol on their skin, they're fine. You put oil on their skin, they're fine. But you put water on their skin, it's hives. These people can't go outside when it's raining, can't bring their kids to the pool. Uh, some of them actually have difficulty drinking liquids themselves and have to work around. There's some people who can only drink milk, some people who can only drink tea. It's a very strange condition. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you the last word here. Um, we seem to be talking constantly nowadays, and not just about the, these unique allergies, because, as you said, they're quite unique uh, in many ways, but we seem to be talking all the time nowadays about the rise mm -hmm. in allergies, mm -hmm. both in children and young people. Do you see that? Is the prevalence of allergies increasing over time nowadays? Absolutely. And, and if I could explain it, I promise I'll take you to Stockholm to get the Nobel Prize with me. I, I have no idea why. There's a lot of factors in this, but the, but the incidence of asthma, allergic disease, and food allergies are absolutely increasing. Right. Part of it is um, uh, the, the fact that we don't get the infections that we used to get. Moishi Velasquez is a great book from New York Times called The Epidemic of Absence, a phenomenal book. Also, there's socioeconomics. You can actually draw a line. The, the wealthier, more educated your parents are, the more likely you are to be diagnosed with a food allergy. And there's also bad advice from physicians, to be honest with you. I mean, if you remember 20 years ago, you may have been telling your pregnant patients to avoid peanuts. Right. Maybe, now we don't. Now we don't. Now right. we tell you you want to eat this. And right. this has all changed. So there's a lot of things involved in this. It's right. our culture. It's our wealth. And it's sometimes bad advice. Bad advice. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, you know, you are the guru here in New York City on allergies, and I hope you come back. Thank you. And if you have any health questions, send them here at fox at drmanny at foxnews.com. Until next time, I'm Dr. Manny.